The process we call retopology is a method that we use to lower the amounts of polygons on an over otherwise high polygon model, which enables us to more easily do UVs and texturing, as well as animating and rigging and painting weights, and also to optimize the rendering process, especially in real-time rendering. Uh, retopologizing high poly models is extremely important since it lowers the amount of triangles the engine has to render. So let's see how we would go about doing that in uh, Maya. So once we have a high polygon model in Maya, the first thing that we want to do is center it. So it's in the middle of our grid on one axis if the model is symmetrical. If it's not, it doesn't matter. But if it is, like in this case, uh, you want it to be centered in the middle. Once you have that done, what you want to do is make the high poly model into a live surface. And you do that by pressing this magnet here. You can see that now it says head which is the name of the model that we are trying to retopologize. So now the model cannot be selected or manipulated. It's just there and it's sitting sitting as a, as a live surface that you can now do the process called quad drawing. And you do that by going to the modeling toolkit. If you don't have it here in the sidebar, you can find it in the edit actually the mesh tools on top and then selecting show modeling toolkit. Now the quad draw is nested. Oh, if you scroll lower in the tools, if you need symmetry, you can select symmetry object X, for example. And then when you press quad draw, you get some of these uh, options here that we are not going to go into specifically now. Uh, but once you have the quad draw selected and the symmetry enabled, press your left mouse button on the surface, you will see that now it put two vertices alongside the symmetry of the x-axis. If you had the symmetry off, you would only get one. You can work with or without symmetry, it's up to you. You can always duplicate the model later and switch it on x-axis by hand. But let's keep it on for now. So what you do by pressing the left button, you get one vertex placed on the live surface that you selected. Basically, the, the whole process of retopology is adding vertices where you want them and then combining them together. To create a face from those vertices, it, what, you're gonna, what you want to do is place four vertices and then hold shift. And then you will see this blue surface appear that you can then left click to place a quad polygon there. So once you have one quad, you can only now add two more vertices. And then when you press shift again, it will add another quad there. So you go about doing that like this, and you can also press shift and hold left click, and then you will be able to draw more planes in one go once you have your vertices laid out the way you want them. So how would we go about doing correct topology on a face, for example. You can find many references online for that. I placed them in the pure F here that we can see a few, a few of those that I found on Polycount. There's a nice th thread about it. So these three show you the basics of what's the, what's the correct way to do the topology flow. You basically want to make this radial, circular, elliptical shapes around different parts for the eyes, the eyebrow ridge, uh, mouth, also the ear and stuff like that. So you, uh, each face is always basically individual, but those general rules should be applied. And the reason we do it this way is because the bending of the objects, once you uh, have them rigged and, and skinned, it's a lot easier to animate predictably as it follows the actual shape of muscles that we have on our face in general. So whenever you retopologize, you should consult these references. I by no means consider myself a master of topology, so you should always 
have your uh, your topology references on the side so you know what you're doing when you're uh, working even when you know what you're doing you should have them as it costs you nothing but in get it can help you so let's try to make a loop around the eyes with the method i described earlier so let's place two where this is here two here then we can add these on the side again here and now let's with the let's drag the polygon surface by holding shift and middle clicking and dragging around if you have if you get aberrations like this you just go undo so now we have our first flow now what we can do which is very convenient and useful is you can drag by left clicking on the vertices around and you can reorder them the way you want them same goes for the whole polygons and also the edges so you can always manipulate what you've created the way you want if you for example find that you would like here need a, a new edge you could you can always just hold control and you will get a an example of what the edge would look like and you 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 can just place it whatever you want which is very convenient and useful so you can do that whenever you find that your resolution is not good enough at that particular position that is also why making clean topological flows is very useful because then you can predictably add or delete more uh, edges so you can also do that on on the other axis so if you find that this is too planar for you you can by holding control and clicking add more resolution to your geometry but I would keep that for later stages when you have the general outline uh, completed. So let's merge the, uh, the the vertices snap when you get them close, and that's what this auto auto weld slider here is. If you want them to snap uh, on lower or higher distances, so we can add this crude huge surfaces and then split them to get more uh, fidelity as you can see the planes and edges get calculated on the live surface so you don't have to worry about that okay so let's add more geometry here and for example you can see that now if we added geometry in this way we would get another get another chance to create a loop but if you don't want to do that you can add another vertex here and then break the loop so you can continue like this to have a flow like this instead of going around but in this case we want to have another loop around the around the eyes so let's add another loop So yeah, and once you want to break off the loop, you can do that by adding new uh, quads or whatever, but you can also add a triangle and you might hear that uh, triangles are not uh, good and in general they aren't because of various reasons, uh, but uh, mostly because of the predictability of the edge flow and the uh, polygon flow but also because it animates unpredictably and weirdly but when you know that there is no particular animation going to happen for example like on on this part of the nose uh, or whatever you find uh, convenient you can always add a quad and then snap a vertex to where you want it to be and you get a 
you get a triangle that then allows you to to make more custom top of flow. Now you should refrain from using triangles, but it's not a death scenario that some people um, make it out to be. But you should uh, do 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 your topology with as little triangles as you can simply because of convenience even if it doesn't break the the animators uh, whatever uh, simply for your own convenience and pre predictability in the in the flow of in your workflow later on so in the case that you wanted to have your eyes open uh, the the logic is pretty much the same eyes would be on a different mesh so you wouldn't probably retopologize eyes in this way since it's a since it's a sphere you would probably create a sphere with lower resolution so you can just put it there and scale it the way you want but the logic of the whole thing would be the same you would make a hole here and that's it like we're going to leave it for now the same thing goes for the mouth we are going to create a loop so the most used way i've seen people do is create those basic loops before going anywhere else to the f on the face like it's eyes mouth and ears first and then you the rest of the topology of the head and face go after that because you try you basically want to match the needs of those basic loops you will most likely want to keep your mouth open so you can create the whole outline and then merge the parts that you want later on in the process. Having in mind that you can always add more geometry. For example, like this. When, wherever you need the, res the resolution to happen. So putting vertices in this like broad manner is probably the best for you initially and then you can refine it later on. The basic reason is for this is you want to get your basic flow as soon as possible. because the whole process is pretty long and boring so you want to get it over with usually but some people find it very relaxing and calming so you might enjoy doing this you can when you see a lot of vertices in a place you can hold shift and left click so it uh, relaxes the geometry and also another useful thing is you can delete your geometry by holding control and shift at the same time and then hovering over the components you can delete whole edges or you can delete polygons also you can delete polygons by dragging control shift and then dragging and you can delete a whole a whole face loop
let's try to tie together this whole section here. And whenever you see too much spacing happening, you can, if you were being correct with your f loops and flows, you will be able to to predictably add more geometry. And inversely delete. Again, I'm not, I don't consider myself good at uh, the top of low. Uh, I'm just showing you the method this is generally done with, but uh, you should consult and do a bit more research on the correct topology flow. I'm probably committing heinous crimes in terms of topology now, but you get the picture. You will generally see very often that the density of the polygons is much bigger in uh, around mouth and uh, eyes and ears than it is on other sections, for example, on the, on the top of your head and stuff like that. So since you need a lot more resolution with deformation uh, while animating your eyes, for example, than animating your forehead, but that's up for debate since maybe your character is very forehead intensive so whenever you're in a studio environment you should consult with the animator that is going to work on your model like where he would like more density placed or more flow, uh, more geometry and face and generally such communication is a very good thing in any production environment so basically that's how you create uh, your low poly mesh over your high poly mesh and once you feel that you're done you can exit your live mode then the high poly gets free again to be selected so you can hide it and you have your low polygon mesh separated so you can do with it wherever you want this one looks like a mask so if you would want to UV it now, it will be a lot easier. So that's the basic way you do retopology. I hope you found it useful.